Good afternoon, everyone. James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we're going to be taking a look at a knife, and that is my current boot knife. This is the LT Wright JX3 knife. Now, this bad boy right here was designed by Chris Tanner from Prepared Mind 101 and Pete Kohler from Dark Timber Knives and is currently being produced at LT Wright shop. And I want to give a big thank you to both LT Wright and Chris Tanner for sending this to me. They sent it to me about six months ago, so it's definitely an overdue review. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the specs and then let's go ahead and get this testing going. Thank you for joining me. The overall length is six and three eighths inches. The blade thickness is one eighth inch thick, 90 degree spine, full tang of course. The steel is A2 tool steel. These are green micarta scales. Of course, the micarta colors or materials for your handles, that's up to you and that'll change the price a little bit. And this running with the leather sheath runs for about $175. And this is the leather sheath that comes with it if you choose to get it. Uh, basic JRE leather sheath that comes with the LT Wright knives. Very nice, very, very basic, but very nice. And um, this of course comes with a belt loop if you want to write it on your belt. I put it on my boot here and it's just my backup knife. And I don't got to worry about leather, you know, if it rusts the knife or nothing. Texas, at least my part of Texas is pretty dry, so um, I like it, simple. Okay, so philosophy of use for this knife. Now I have seen a video of Chris Tanner's where he describes you know, his idea when he was making this, this knife, when he was designing it. And he designed it basically as a necker knife, as a companion blade. So it's not gonna be your main belt knife, but something you know for skinning, particularly that's what he had in mind, something for skinning some small game, stuff like that. So where my main belt knife, which is the LT Wright GNS, is the one that's the workhorse it's the one that does everything uh this one i can leave for special occasions uh for example game processing now this one still does it i always make sure my main belt knife always gets all the action but if i need something with you know a pristine sharp edge or if i lent out my blade or i lost it for un some unfortunate reason i still have this in my boot and while we're on the subject i think this knife because of the small size it would be great for everyday carry just edc use Say you work in a warehouse, you know, you can cutting through boxes, cardboard packages, zip ties, rope, all kinds of stuff like that. You know, something small that's not going to be, you know, causing concern from other people. You know how people are. So something small like this, but yet it's a fixed blade. So it's going to be strong and it's going to hold an edge very well. Now, first test for any fixed blade that I ever do, of course, is making a one stick fire. Just for the off chance that you may find yourself in that bad situation and you lost your equipment, stuff like that. And this little knife, even though it's not very large and it's not its primary purpose, I know being a fixed blade knife with a one eighth inch thick spine on that, it'll do pretty well. So let's get this test started. Okay, so as you can tell, not only did it baton very well, but it also feather sticks very well. Now, it being a small blade, of course, you're going to be very limited to what you can baton. Uh, so this is where you just got to think a little bit and just um, be resourceful. Look for a soft, 
thin stick, something made out of a soft wood, and you'll be all right. And after that, once you get the fire going, then you can put bigger logs. But um, overall, it seems to be doing pretty good, so let's test out that 90 degree spine. Now, it's an LT right, so we all know what's gonna happen here, but let's make a show of it. I'd say that's a success. Okay, so test one was a success. It handled that one stick fire very well. Now let's try some camp cooking. So let's do some food processing. Uh, so I'm gonna cut up a couple of veggies to make a stew. And as you saw earlier, we did catch ourselves a squirrel. So the final test will be some game processing. So uh, let's start off with some mushrooms. Okay, so as you saw, the blade did very well cutting up some veggies, did really good for some camp cooking. And now our next test is to process this rock squirrel I caught earlier. And you know, it's never easy taking a life, but I very much am an advocate for knowing your environment and hunting and gathering and you know, learning all those kind of things. So as long as we're not leaving the animal to waste and needlessly killing, I think it's a justified action uh, in that case also we get to test out the blade how well does it do with some processing some game processing first things first is I'm going to soak the fur a little bit and it'll make it easier to remove it and so the hair doesn't stick to the meat okay so we're just gonna start removing this and this is rock squirrel. This is a desert type of squirrel, not your usual gray or red squirrel. And these guys are just tough. They are tough to process, especially the older that they, they get. And this one's definitely an adult. So it's definitely a good test for the blade. <laughs>
Okay, so our stew's looking pretty good. Now I'm just gonna place some olive oil. Now my second pan. Wait for it to get hot and then I'm gonna place the scroll in here. Just brown the meat a little bit. Once the meat is pretty browned out, then I'm gonna place it on the stew and just let the stew cook the last of it. And the squirrel has just has already been rinsed, so it doesn't have any blood or anything like that. Pretty clean. And then we're just gonna season them. Okay, the squirrel is browned out. Now I'm just gonna place it in the stew and cook the last of it. So, almost ready. Well guys, it's been about half an hour, so the stew is just about ready. So we're just gonna take it out and let it cool off. Check it out. Onions, tomatoes, jalapenos, mushrooms, potatoes, some squirrel in there with some spices, some cayenne, pepper, salt, garlic. Damn, that looks good. Came out really good. Might have gone a little overboard on the jalapenos, so it's a little spicy. But other than that, that's fine. Not an issue. Okay, so last thoughts on the LT Wright JX3 knife. Now you saw me do three different tests that I consider to be crucial components for a knife. There should, should be three things that it should excel out. One is the one stick fire. So we got to see it a little bit of abuse with the batoning, then some woodworking with the feather sticks. Then of course, testing out that 90 degree spine for a ferro rod to get the fire going and no one was surprised. We all knew what was coming. It excelled at that. Second thing is some camp cooking. So some, whether it's the kitchen at home or at a picnic, at a hike, you know, you're always gonna be cutting up some veggies and stuff like that, and it worked very well. It's, it's a slicer. This was designed for slicing. So, you know, it, it worked very well for that. And last test for me was game processing. I consider that to be just an essential component for a knife. It should be able to do that very well. I'm very much into game processing and catching small game so it it excelled at it okay if i had to say one thing you know i have really nothing bad to say but it's a review so i'm trying to look for something that i think can be improved upon uh i think the price 170 dollars is a little high for a knife this small now of course it's an lt right so you're getting uh, you know a work of art a functional work of art however you know knives around this size tend to be a little little bit cheaper around 140 150 and i think if it was a, a friendlier price you would see a lot more jx3s out on the field more you know on youtube and stuff like that so if they could you know that would be awesome um and other than that it's a great knife now it's not going to be your main belt knife of course because it's a little small if you're out in the woods or the mountains you're going to want something a little bigger but if you know it, this can work very well if you have a hatchet or an axe with you stuff like that for a companion blade or you wanna just keep it as a specialized knife just for game skinning. I could see that working as well. That's what it was intended for. Well guys, that's about the conclusion of this video. I'm gonna enjoy the last of my stew, enjoy the last of this evening, beautiful evening. So thank you for watching. It really means the world to me, the views, the likes, the support, the friendships. Thank you guys so much. So go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And down below on the comments, go ahead and comment what is your go-to skinning knife? I'm, I'm curious now. What's, what's just the one that you kind of just con use just for that? And thank you all so much. So I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.